Sacramento, center of California state government, an historic city that grew and prospered from the days of the gold rush. But Sacramento is not just the original city that was a trade and transportation center. Sacramento includes, of course, the original hub city, but it is also very much the suburbs, and it is rural in nature. In short, people who live in Sacramento County are, and consider themselves, Sacramentans. Like many metropolitan areas, Sacramento has sprawled outward to the north, east, and south. Prosperity has meant growth. Growth, in turn, has meant more and more people. People have asked for, and paid for, governmental services. Far more people live outside the major city, Sacramento, than live within its boundaries. In fact, more people live in unincorporated parts of Sacramento County than in any other county in the state, except Los Angeles. As more and more people have come to Sacramento, the need and the demand for governmental services has grown. Special service areas designed to meet the special service needs have been added to the major governmental bodies. Aside from county government and the four cities, the county contains 134 different, often overlapping governments. Simply put, government has been added to in a patchwork fashion, put together to meet the needs of a group of people in a particular area. Government has piled up. It has layered itself. It works, but it's often bulky, certainly confusing. And there is no denying that it is expensive. Tax rates have continued to rise, even though the levels of service often remain unchanged. While special districts provide services, water, fire protection, park and recreational needs, they also create some problems, too. Because there are so many, it is almost impossible for the average citizen to keep up. No one has the time to go to eight or nine meetings a month to monitor the operations of local government. Besides, where do you go? Moreover, because these districts have a single function and charge a tax for that purpose alone, it is impossible to establish priorities among the various services or from one year to the next. But Sacramento is not unique. It represents a good cross-section of the way in which local government has grown since World War II. But now, in 1974, Sacramento has become unique, a leader in suggested redesign of local government. As far back as the mid-50s, local governing officials and other civic-minded persons questioned the structure of their local government. The questions they began to ask were, do local units of government meet the needs of the people? Do local officials really hear what the people are saying? Are they able to fully respond to a set of very diverse needs? The overlapping maze of special districts presents all kinds of horror stories. There's the one about the woman whose car was on fire directly across the street from a firehouse. They couldn't respond because the fire wasn't in their district, so they called another fire department several blocks up the street, and they came. And then there's the one about the fire district suing the water district over installation of fire hydrants, taxpayers' money being used on both sides of a lawsuit. And then there's the story of the park and recreation district, one with no park. Reorganization of local government is designed to prevent these kind of things from happening. It became apparent that the people of Sacramento County ought to have a chance to consider an alternate form of local government. So in 1971, city and county government established a citizens' commission to prepare a new charter for local government. Its 40 members came from a wide spectrum of the community, representing every geographic area and many particular interests. Professional staff was hired and a very comprehensive study was begun using local and federal funds. First of all, the commission carefully studied and inventoried local governments in Sacramento County more than 130 separate units. Secondly, there was an in-depth public opinion survey designed to show what individual citizens wanted from government and how they thought government could be made more responsive. Predictably, the people wanted a system which would put them more in touch with government than is now the case. During the past three years, the Commission has conducted the most exhaustive study of local government 
ever done anywhere in America. In the course of its investigation and the preparation of its reports and recommendations, the Commission has held more than 40 public hearings throughout the county. Its members are volunteers, and they have devoted between 35 and 40,000 hours to the Commission work. Along the way, there have been more than 500 meetings with staff, local officials, and interested citizens. At every step, the commissioners invited citizen input. Uppermost in their minds was the desire to know what kind of government the people wanted. Generally speaking, the commission has dealt with those entities that provide general governmental services. Schools and public education are controlled by state law and by independently elected school boards. Therefore, the commission's recommendations do not affect school districts such as San Juan or Sacramento. In 1973, the commission won from the legislature the right to place Proposition 8 on the state ballot in June of 1974. The issue was approved, and the California Constitution now gives residents of Sacramento County the right to choose for themselves the kind of government they themselves want. Sacramento, in short, has become an innovator, the first of the state's metropolitan areas to study and propose the complete revamping of an older, outmoded form of government. If they choose, the people may now create a single general purpose government to take care of all of Sacramento County. There are options too. For example, citizens of Folsom, Galt, and Isleton may elect to remain as general law cities or participate in reorganization if they choose. Sacramentans now have an unusual opportunity. If they choose, they may totally change local government, not just because it is old, but because it has become burdensome and expensive. But why? Why change? Charter Commission Chairman Tom Hammer explains. We think there are three reasons why reorganization uh, is being considered at this time. First is a matter of taxes. We all know that the cost of government has gone up during the past few years, and there's no assurance that a reorganized government will cut your taxes, but we think that a new reorganized system has a good chance of retarding the rate of that growth, keeping it down below what it might otherwise have been. Secondly, we think a reorganized government will be more visible and more approachable. The average citizen, for example, simply cannot go to seven, eight, nine meetings a month to know what's going on. But if there were a single reorganized government, he could be effective in establishing goals and priorities. And thirdly, we'd like to see an improvement in the levels of service, especially those parts of the county where services are deficient. Many places we have excellent services, and we'd like to see that same high level, high standard of service provided to all the citizens of Sacramento County. One of the most important issues confronting the commission and residents of the county is cost. It's ideal, of course, to have a willing and responsive government but is it possible to design such a government and still cut the cost of what is being done now? The commission called on an outside expert, Columbian Research Institute. It undertook a thorough study of what government now accomplishes in Sacramento, what it costs, and what it is projected to cost over the next several years. Columbian's preliminary report, which the commission adopted as a working document, indicated that virtually each of the 36 studied areas would save tax money under the projected reorganization. We prepared a tax code area map which illustrates the geographical location of the 36 sample tax code areas that were prepared. And it's important to note that the, the 34 out of the 36 tax code areas that we predict will have a savings are rather well distributed throughout the county. The savings vary from uh, a low, I think, of somewhere around uh, eight cents all the way up to some very, very significant savings in uh, uh, a number, particularly of the urban uh, tax code areas. The rural areas also, uh, frankly, much to our surprise, we, we find will have a, a rather significant savings. And the three small cities, we find, will have a rather significant uh, tax break as a result if they should choose to opt in uh, rather than opt out of the reorganized unit. 
The commission moved on to deal with the problem of reorganizing major governments. Who would do what? What would reorganization or merger of departments do to people? It was determined early that the new government would not be designed in a way that would cause people to lose jobs. Basically, economies and efficiencies in employment would be achieved through attrition, that is, not filling jobs when retirements occur or employees leave jobs. This seemed feasible in Sacramento, as the commission noted. In county government alone, there is a high turnover rate, 15% in a year some years. Colombian research pointed out that significant reductions in the need for additional employees could be realized in the relatively near future. These salary savings can be translated into tax dollar savings. The commission also determined that public employees would have the same rights to organize themselves that they presently enjoy. The county of Sacramento and the cities have already sought out and put together mergers in certain specific service-related areas, such as hospital care and health care, like that offered here, assessment practices, and certain criminal prosecutions by the district attorney. But the city and county have gone as far as they can go. Those successes relate directly to the concerns expressed continually to the commission. Can reorganization result in more economic government? Will the resulting government be more approachable and responsive to the needs of the people? And can such a government provide the correct level of services in appropriate parts of the county? The commission proposes election of a mayor by all voters in the county. That mayor would work with a professional chief administrative officer in operating the executive arm of government. Eleven supervisors would be elected in each of 11 separate districts and they would form the Board of Supervisors. In addition, the Commission recognized the precept that local government governs best. It made provision for a series of community governments, five-member elective community councils, that would provide local decisions on such matters as rezoning, parks and recreation, priorities for local services, and animal control. Commission member Maynard Nelson discussed the advantages of such local governmental control. I'm concerned that we keep the right perspective on this issue of a new charter, that we don't get detracted because of one little thing here and there that uh, we don't like. I see this charter as offering us uh, in the communities uh, an opportunity for our local government that we have not had in the past. We've had separate fire boards, we've had water boards and park boards, and to try to keep track of the activities of each separate board uh, is really too much to expect for the average citizen. We're talking about now a community government that will handle uh, several issues all together. We'll have the opportunity uh, to have one elective body represent our interests, to be an advocate for us in development of the community, in working with uh, uh, higher levels of government. This elective body will, will be able to speak the voice officially of the community. And if each community with uh, its own community council wants to establish its own character, they'll have that opportunity. Right now, if Orangevale wants to have animals and develop somewhat of a rural character, they can still do this effectively. And if another area wants to have more urban services, they can have that. We'll let each community set, set its own priorities and uh, uh, character. The proposed government has the flexibility of creating urban, suburban, and rural service districts for administration and tax purposes. This will recognize that differences exist throughout the county in levels of service, incurred obligations, and needs for services, and that therefore taxation should reflect these differences. For example, the retirement plan deficit of the city of Sacramento will remain an obligation of the urban service district, which is the present city of Sacramento. The task of proposing a reorganization plan that will operate efficiently and economically in meeting the needs of the citizens hasn't been an easy one. If residents of Sacramento County approve reorganization in November, they will have approved a new and unique concept in California. Sacramento stands at the threshold of showing all Californians that government can be brought closer to its people, that it can change as times change, and that economies are still possible, even though government is called upon to provide better services. In short, that government can be made to respond to the people and their varying needs. Reorganization in the name of the people. That's the challenge that faces the Sacramento voter in 1974.